So here in my hand, I have a piston that is described as being semi-forged. This is actually a brand new OEM Toyota piston for the 1.6 liter 4AGZE supercharged Toyota engine. And if you look up these pistons online, if you decide to do a bit of research on them, you will see that on many forums, people describe these pistons as being semi-forged. Even the company from which I bought these pistons from, MRP, Man on Racing Products, on their website, describes these pistons as being semi-forged. Forged. By the way, if you need 4AGE performance stuff, Mad on Racing Products has everything from engine internals to intake manifolds to turbo kits and all of it is top notch. So definitely check them out. Links to these pistons and MRP are in the description. Now back to our topic. Today we're going to answer the question of what semi-forged pistons are. Now, as you might know, some time ago I made a video on pistons comparing forged cast and hyper eutectic pistons and if you watch that video you will see that nowhere have i said the word semi-forged within that video and today we're going to fix that to understand what semi-forged pistons are we first have to understand how they're made and the clue is in the name itself in the word semi-forged the piston is forged half way. So when a forging press is forging the piston, a semi-forged piston, the forging press operator is going to shut off the forging press halfway into the semi-forged forging process, creating a semi-forged piston. Actually, blacksmiths have been making semi-forged swords for centuries. They would hit the metal with half their strength to create a semi-forged sword. Okay. Hands up, who fell for all this nonsense? Hmm? I hope nobody, uh, because what I just said is untrue. I just made it up. Um, I made it up to illustrate why the word semi-forged is actually misleading. Uh, it is physically impossible to semi-forge anything. You cannot forge things halfway. There's no such thing. A piston is either cast or forged. Semi-forged pistons do not exist. I don't know who coined the, the term semi-forged. Maybe it was a marketing expert or somebody who wanted to associate the strength of the word forged with semi-forged pistons, uh, just like with semi-forged wheels. Uh, I have no idea how the term started, but the term, the phrase stuck and people are still using it today a lot. And today I want to clear the misconceptions around this word and to make you understand what it actually means and what it doesn't. Again, semi-forged pistons, just like semi-forged wheels or semi-forged swords, do not exist. So, what are semi-forged pistons then? Well, when people are speaking about semi-forged pistons, they are actually speaking in the vast majority of cases, they're actually speaking about cast pistons. But before you get all disappointed and jump to conclusions, you have to understand that there are some kinds of casting and some specific instances where the word semi-forged, although incorrect, is sort of justified. But before we get to those special cases, let's first understand when the usage of the word semi-forged isn't justified. Now, many semi-forged pistons that are described as such are actually hyper eutectic pistons. That means uh, that the piston has more than 12.5% of silicon in it. Uh, such a piston is more resistant to wear, it has less thermal expansion because uh, more silicon in the aluminum alloy than 12.5% results in free flowing silicon particles in the alloy itself. And this is actually good because it does improve the hardness of the piston, but it also makes the piston a bit more brittle if there's too much silicon in it. Now, hyper eutectic pistons are great for emissions, they're also great for reducing blow by because you can specify a much tighter piston to cylinder clearance because the hyper eutectic piston expands less under heat. Now, hyper eutectic pistons require a special casting process. When it comes to piston casting processes, we can divide them into two kinds, low pressure casting and high pressure casting. Low pressure casting is either gravity casting, where you simply, where you simply pour in the molten aluminum alloy, or it's vacuum casting, where you create a vacuum 
in the mold and this vacuum uh, in the mold actually causes the aluminum alloy to fill in the void in the mold itself. That's a low pressure casting and a great number of pistons is made using low pressure casting. However, these are uh, never described as semi-forged. They are sort of the classical pistons using classical piston alloys, such as some of these alloys, for example, with this sort of uh, content of silicon in them. Now, a very classical piston alloy is a eutectic piston alloy that has around 12.5% of silicon in it. So just the maximum amount of silicon that can be fully dissolved within the aluminum alloy. Anything above that is hyper eutectic and needs high pressure casting. Now compared to low pressure casting, high pressure casting is different because the molten aluminum alloy is actually forced into a sealed mold under high pressure using some sort of a piston or any other tool that can force the aluminum alloy into the mold very, very rapidly, usually in a matter of milliseconds. Now, this sort of process is required for hyper eutectic pistons because it results in a more uniform dispersion of the free flowing silicon particles in the aluminum alloy. This is very important for hyper eutectic pistons because if the particles aren't uniformly uh, dispersed within the alloy, you're going to have a concentration of the silicon particles in one part of the piston and that's going to make a, a piston that isn't uniform, it's going to be weak, it's going to be difficult to machine and it's going to be undesirable for usage in an engine. And many hyperdectic pistons that are cast using high pressure casting are often described as being semi-forged. This is an instance of uh, an unjustified usage of the word semi-forged. Because the aluminum alloy is in a fully liquid state, it's simply forced into the molding, and although these pistons do exhibit uh, many properties that are better than a classical gravity cast piston, there is absolutely no forging going on here. However, the term semi-forged keeps being used for these kinds of pistons. It's very common in the Subaru community. Uh, many people also call uh, the 2JZ pistons, the stock ones, 2JZ turbo engine. Uh, the stock pistons are actually hyper eutectic cast pistons. There's zero forging going on here. But in many instances, OEM manufacturers uh, have the capacity to have very, very strict, very high quality control, which results in very good pistons. And although they are cast, uh, they're capable of sustaining very large amounts of power, very high temperatures, and quite a bit of stress. In many cases, quality control can be just as important or sometimes even more important than the actual manufacturing process themselves. Itself, actually a well-made hyperutectic piston, a cast one, is better than a poorly made forged piston. So, all that being said, there's no forging going on here and the word semi-forged should not be used for any of these pistons. Uh, to know when the word semi-forged isn't justified, you just have to take the piston and turn it around to its underside. If you see parting lines like this or cross hatches like this or anything like this, this is casting. It's definitely a cast piston and there's nothing involving any sort of forging uh, in the process of manufacture of a piston that has these sort of lines or cross hatches on its underside. Now, what about wheels? There's semi-forged wheels out there too. Well, in the case of wheels, the word semi-forged is partly justified because a semi-forged wheel is made by using a cast wheel, basically, which is thinner than the final desired dimension of the wheel. And it's then put into a machine which rolls the inner section, the rim, into the actual final needed measurement of the wheel. Again, as you can see, there's zero forging going on, but the results, the properties of these wheels are indeed semi-forged because 
The rim section which has been rolled exhibits properties, mechanical properties that are similar to that of a forged wheel. However, the center section, the part where the spokes are, is again fully cast, nothing forged, so it is essentially cast-like properties or cast properties on the spokes uh, part and then forged-like properties on the rim section. So what about instances when the term semi-forged is justified? Well, this piston is actually kind of semi-forged. To understand why, let me show you a picture, a photo, of a forged piston underside and of a cast piston underside. You can pretty easily distinguish between the two, right? The cast piston has parting lines from the casting and the forged piston is smooth on the other side. Now I'm going to turn this piston around and I'm going to show you its underside. And you're going to tell me, you can write it in the comments section, is this forged or is it cast? As you can see, the underside is smooth, there's no parting lines, so you'll think it's forged. But also, in the middle here, it has these ribs, which is something you almost never see on forged pistons. This is something that's characteristic of cast pistons. And this is why this piston actually has confused very many people. Some will say it's forged, others will say it's cast, and then the rest will say it's semi-forged. In reality, this is a cast piston. However, it's made using a pretty special casting method, something called semi-solid casting. Now, semi-solid casting relies on something called thixotropy. Now, don't get scared and confused by big words. You probably have thixotropy in your fridge right now. If you have a bottle of ketchup in your fridge, then you have something thixotropic in your house. Thixotropy is simply a property of certain fluids. When you leave a thixotropic fluid alone, if you don't touch it, it's going to become very viscous and it won't flow easily. On the other hand, if you shake it or stir it or shear it, uh, it's going to become less viscous and it's going to flow more easily. Ketchup is a typical example of a thixotropic fluid. But aluminum also becomes thixotropic at certain temperatures, and the semi-solid casting process uh, leverages this property of aluminum to create parts of very high quality. Once aluminum is brought into this semi-solid clay-like state, uh, a piston or some sort of plunger is again used to push the aluminum into the mold. Once it's in the mold, uh, pressure is often still being exerted onto the aluminum as it cools down and becomes fully solid. There are many advantages to the semi-solid casting process, one of which is that because the aluminum is semi-solid as it enters uh, the mold cavity, there's no slushing or slurring around of the alloy as would be the case if it was in a liquid state. And this means that parts made using the semi-solid casting process have zero porosity. And this of course is very good for the strength of the parts manufactured. But on top of that, uh, parts made using the semi-solid casting process have very low shrinkage. As you can see, the underside of this piston has no casting lines, which is something you can see on pistons cast using conventional methods. And this is because when a piston is cast using conventional methods, it shrinks a bit and leaves behind on it the traces of the mold itself. There's no shrinking on pistons that are made using semi-solid casting and you get a very, very smooth finish. You cannot touch things, uh, things to the camera, but I guarantee you this is extremely, extremely smooth. Much smoother than any cast piston uh, you will ever see if it wasn't made using semi-solid casting. And this is good because a smooth surface finish is great for applying all sorts of coatings onto the piston. And as you can see, this one has a thermal coating on top. Another benefit of parts made using semi-solid casting is that they have excellent grain flow. Semi-solid cast parts have a very fine, very uniform, very coherent microstructure. 
And this is why these pistons were successful at confusing some people on the Toy Mods forums. Some time ago, a member of the Toy Mods forum actually took these pistons under an electron microscope to finally answer the question whether they are forged uh, or cast. Unfortunately, uh, the images, as you can see, are no longer available on the forum, but the conclusion is, they concluded that these are definitely forged. And although they're not, this test was very beneficial and very useful to confirm that semi-solid cast parts actually have a grain flow that is the same as that of forged pistons, which means that these have mechanical properties and strength very similar to that of forged pistons. But they also have benefits that forged pistons don't. This is a hyperdeutectic piston. Most semi-solid cast pistons are made using the A390 alloy. Uh, this has around 17% by weight silicon in it, which means this is definitely a hyperdeutectic piston, which means low thermal expansion, which means low bowl by, low piston slap, if any, and low wear. So you sort of get the best of both worlds, both a cast and a forged piston, which is why the, the word semi-forged, although wrong when it comes to the manufacturing process, is actually pretty correct when it comes to the properties of this piston. It exhibits, it exhibits both the benefits of forged and cast pistons. But to prevent confusion, uh, a fully forged piston, something made from the 2618 alloy, will ultimately be stronger than this and more ductile, and it will take more abuse than this piston. But this is a much better all-rounder compared to a fully forged piston. So why aren't all pistons made using semi-solid casting if the result is so good? Well, the disadvantage is that it's very expensive to make pistons this way. Uh, the semi-solid casting process requires expensive machinery, complicated machinery, and very complex uh, casting and cooling control methods to get good results. It also requires very stringent quality control to ensure you're doing a good job. And uh, although it's possible to make them relatively quickly using semi-solid casting, Again, the cost is very high for manufacturers, especially when you take into account that the raw materials for this, the alloys, are also very expensive. And this is why you don't see them in engines around the world very often. And uh, usually they're reserved for performance-oriented engines, which is what in the late 80s the 4AGZE engine was. And there you have it. I hope this video manages to clear away some of the misconceptions when it comes to the term semi-forged. I also hope it manages to end a debate that has been going on the forums for years. No, they're not forged. But yes, they are very good. Uh, this is a pretty impressive piston and it's not semi-forged if you're talking about its manufacturing process, but it does have mechanical properties of both forged and cast pistons, which is why the term is sort of justified. But anyway, you look at it, this is a very impressive piston. And many people manage to take this stock OEM semi-solid cast piston to around 600 horsepower. This is very impressive when you remember uh, its OEM stock costs half as much as aftermarket forged pistons, but it does what they do and it has better wear resistance and less piston slap. So it's a really nice piston and this is why it's going into my uh, Turbo 4 EFE build that I'm calling Project Underdog. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, found it useful and maybe even a bit entertaining. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.